And welcome back to the Orkabout shop. My name is Rod. So I'm working on the Acorn Sailing Skiff. I now have, well, actually three planks on the boat and I'm working on the fourth. So in this video, episode number seven, I'm going to go through the process right from start to finish of how the plank pattern is made to making the plank, fitting it on, and riveting it in place. So this will be somewhat of a synopsis of that whole process. Every pair of planks that goes onto the hull takes a couple of days to actually manufacture. So start out by making some little strips that I'll be using to spile out the pattern for the plank itself. We're just going to cut these strips into uh, smaller little pieces of varying lengths and then I will take them over to my disc sander whereby I'll just kind of sand them down to points. To make sure the plank lands flat across from the land point to the existing plank, I'm just taking my chisel and knocking off a bit of the plywood on each station using just a bit of a scrap piece of lumber to check to make sure that it doesn't uh, rock on the form themselves. Once I'm happy with the fit, I'm just going to tack down my batten with some small finishing nails. And then I'm just going to hot glue in a smaller section of batten to extend along and pass the transom. I have to do this because the long batten cannot be uh, sort of bent in an arc around the curve that I need to. I need the battens to lay perfectly flat across all of the form. And then I'm just going to use my square to scribe a 5 8 line on the existing planking so I can mark where the third plank in this particular situation is going to land. Then I take my pointer sticks and I hot glue them at each station. The top one is pointing up and touching the 5 8 line on the existing plank and the pointer stick facing down is pointing to where the land, the edge of the plank will land on the form. Once I have all my little pointer sticks hot glued on, I can just remove this batten and very carefully move it over to my workbench. I just really don't want this breaking. Here I'm just fine tuning the stem using a batten, a long piece of stick with some sandpaper wrapped around it. And if I just sort of slide the batten along the forms, the sandpaper will just tune up the stem. I also need to bevel the transom so that the plank will land flat against it. That means it'll be flush on the outside surface and flush to the inside surface. So here I'm just using my large chisel. And tuning it up with a wood rasp seems to work quite well. Now again, I'll just use my long batten to check to see that it's sitting flush. Then I need to bevel the edge of the existing plank so that the next plank will lay flush onto that 5 8 surface. So I'll just start by beveling at each station because that's where I can use a little scrap piece of wood to test for it. I'll do that at each station. When I'm happy the fit at each station, then I just need to bring my plane between those two stations to kind of extend the line. And it's a bit of a rolling bevel from forward to back, changing bevel as it goes. So now I'm going to take my spiling pattern, lay it down on some of the uh, 1-8 ply, and I'm going to actually make a full-size pattern of the plank that will go back on the boat. Now I do this because I don't really want to uh, be wasting cedar if I make a mistake. After I have marked all the points where the pointer sticks land, I actually put down my batten again, line it up with all of the points, nail it down, 
Check for fairness in that smooth line and then draw the line out. Once I've drawn it out, I'm just going to cut it out with my jigsaw on both sides and then see how it fits to the boat. Once I'm happy with the fit of my pattern, it's time to actually make the cedar plank. So here I have to scarf two planks together. I need uh, almost 13 feet and my boards are nine, eight and nine feet long. So I'm doing about an eight to one scarf and I'm starting off by just overlapping the planks, removing a whole bunch of material as fast as I can with my power thickness planer and then cleaning it up with the belt sander. Then it's time to glue these two planks together. I just apply some unthickened epoxy, let it soak into the cedar, which tends to uh, want to absorb quite a bit of it. And once I'm happy that the cedar has absorbed what it wants to, then I will thicken up some of the remaining epoxy and add a little bit of the peanut butter mixture to one of the planks. The finished thickness of the planks actually will end up being uh, 5 16 These planks I have planed down a little bit over that. Uh, I just like to leave them a little bit thicker so that once they're glued together I'm able to run them back through the thickness planer to clean up any indiscrepancies in the overlap of the scarf joint. Then it's just a matter of clamping these two pieces together overnight and letting the epoxy harden. And then the planks go back through the thickness planer to get them to the required 5 16 thickness. Here I'm taking my pattern that I'm happy with, laying it down onto my cedar plank. And I'm just going to do one at a time. I'm going to cut one of these cedar planks out after marking it and trimming it, making sure that it fits. And when I'm happy with the fit that it fits on the boat, then I will just uh, create the mirror image of that plank for the other side of the boat. Often, even though the pattern fits pretty well to the boat, there's always minor little adjustments that need to be made. A little bit thicker here, a little bit thinner there. So here I am uh, putting down my batten on the additional marks that I've made and I'm going to make those adjustments on the full stock of red cedar. Then I can just draw that line out when I'm happy with the curve and we're ready to cut this plank out. I always tend to cut a little bit outside the line so that I can take my block plane and clean it up to that edge as necessary. Now into the final fitting of plank on the first side. And when I'm happy with the plank on that side of the boat and it all fits well, then I will go back and retrace it. And I will also match the two planks up onto the workbench and I will sand and plane them so they are exactly the same. This process may mean actually taking the plank on and off the boat a few times to make sure that I'm very happy with the way that the planking is landing up with the existing planking. 
then I will go and uh, clean up anything necessary, i.e. cleaning up the, we call the gain or the rebate in the end of the planks, just so that they will mate together nice and cleanly. Okay, I'm very happy with the fit on this uh, plank number three. So I'm going to now reach underneath and just make a few reference marks as to where the bottom edge of this plank should be landing on the forms. Then I'll take it back and compare it to my pattern and uh, mark it all out and cut out the second side of this planking. With the plank dry fitted and shaped the way I want it, I'm going to need to steam the ends of these planks. There's quite a bit of twist in the end and yes, I could probably force it into there, but I'm very concerned that the planking would actually split. I've got some very straight grain cedar here, very susceptible to long splits. So I'm using uh, the method of bagging in place with some steam fed into the uh, plastic tubing. This was sort of made famous by Lou of Tips from a Shipwright. Check out his channel. I've got this uh, steaming in the bag here for about 20 minutes and then it just uh, twists and bends like butter. The plank will sit on the boat overnight so that it can cool down. And the next morning I will take it back off of the boat and I like to sand the inside, clean up any uh, little dents and dings from uh, back and forth onto the boat, any pencil lines, because it's going to really be hard to sand that later when it's in the boat. On the bow end of the planking, I need to cut a rebate on the uh, back side of the top edge that will mate up to the rebate that's the plank that's already on there and the bottom edge of the uh, outside edge. Now the rebate is supposed to be about nine inches long and the purpose of the rebate is that so then when at the bow, when the planks overlap, if we thin down the very end of this to half it, half the thickness on this plank and half the thickness on the plank that's already on the boat, they will kind of overlap and come together as being flush at the very end in the stem. So I've set my uh, Stan Lee number 78 uh, rebate plane to be the three quarter inches or sorry I think it's uh, yeah five eighths of an inch from the edge and the blade is set right to the edge there so that we are only trimming 5 eighths of an inch uh, wide and then we're going to trim down from sort of half the thickness or even a little bit more than half the thickness just kind of tapering it up to a little bit to nothing on the edge there. I could have done this before steaming the planks but I'm never really sure as to you know where the length of the plank would be whether this plank is going to fit so I'm doing it afterwards a little bit trickier because of the curve in the plank, but it's certainly possible and doable. So I've just clamped it down and now I can run my plane with the edge running against the board and I'm just going to start to knock off the end here.
think that should do it. Then I flip it over to do the other side. So we can see we've got uh, a recess on one side and the opposite side on the uh, top side. Now to do the uh, starboard side, it's a mirror image. I actually need to uh, move the fence on this to the other side because the rabbit is not on this side, the rabbit is on this side. So uh, simple enough, easy enough to do, but just requires a bit of resetting. Now I do have another uh, 78 rabbit plane, I just don't have the fence for it at the time here. I picked it up, I don't know, somewhere sometime, got a new blade for it, but uh, it would be really nice if you had uh, both of them set up so that I don't have to switch this fence around and remeasure each time. Just getting a bit of bouncing in here and I'm not getting a clean edge. So I'll take this under the little rebate plane and just kind of clean up this inside corner a bit. So if I just dry fit this plank into here, you can see how the overlap creates these two planks at the very end here to be flush. And then it just very slowly works its way out to being an overlap. With the plank all made, sanded, ready to install, I'm just going to clamp it in place. It all looks good, so I just need to remove it again. Because I need to put some bedding compound in behind here. Now that's not exactly traditional, the bedding compound in behind the uh, planking. But most of these little boats that I build for customers are dry stored, you know, on land, taken down on a little trailer to the water to do a little bit of sailing or rowing. So they would take a long time for the planking to actually swell up. So just to smooth it out and clean it up, I've kind of created a little notch trowel out of a scrap piece of epoxy spreader. So I just want to make sure that I don't have too much on here. I don't really want it squeezing out everywhere. So I can clean up and wipe off any excess. Without a little bit of bedding compound, let's try to get this on here without it sliding around and smearing bedding compound everywhere. And finding the clamps when you're needing them. So when I'm placing it back on, I'm kind of putting my clamp about mid station or mid mid spacing between the forms here because rivets need to go through there. We don't need to put too many clamps. Just need to move them around as necessary. And I can bring this in. Just want to get this down and under that rebate notch and line that up there. Just push it into place. I'm ready to move on to the riveting. For the riveting process, I will need to mark exactly where I want my rivets. The spacing between the forms is uh, 14 inches on center basically, and uh, there will be a rib 
where that form is, here and here, and one in between. I cannot rivet those right now because the ribs are not in there. Those ribs will be riveted in. So I'm putting a rivet between those spacings, which is three and a half inches from every form in there. A bit of a, you know, guesswork in the sense of sort of exactly where the form is underneath. The goal is to have all of these rivets lined up down here and then the next row in, in the, into the uh, rib when it goes in. The tools needed for the uh, riveting process are obviously rivets. I'm using uh, one inch by 14 gauge rivets. They are square copper rivets with a small head and the row that goes onto the inside which is really just a small conical shaped washer to insert that you know I'm not just going to drive these through with a hammer because that'll just crush wood so I've got a small drill I'm going to go in we know that the uh, the overlap is 5 8 so I'll go sort of you know 5 16 or somewhere in that neighborhood I'm going to drill through both planks Maybe do a couple of locations. Then I will drive the rivets in. They should be tight. They should not just sort of fall through that hole. That's why the hole is a little bit smaller than the diameter or the shank of the uh, rivet itself. thing about putting these rivets in right now, just putting a few, just kind of holding everything in place. Can't move now as I start to... Following that, we have what we call a rivet set or a row, or sorry, a row set. There's a hole drilled down the center and there's a bit of a corner like a recess or countersink on there that the rivet can fit into. Now the difficulty for me is to get under there and line up that row with the rivet that's coming through. So that as I drive the rivet through, it's going into the robe, and the robe is on. Then we take little nippers and nip off the extension or the oh, the uh, what the overhang. We want to leave a little bit of copper still showing or sticking out be behind the robe, which allows us to peen over the end. So now I'm using the peening end of the hammer, which is the round end. Hence, they call it a ball peen hammer. Now, as I'm tapping on the underside there, I don't want to be driving the uh, copper rivet back out. So I'm going to hold it in place with uh, this uh, just an old sledgehammer iron so that it's not coming out. I got to go under there and just kind of tap, tap, tap on it. On the transom, I'm actually going to use some silicone bronze screws. Pre-drill a hole. The main thing here is when you line it up, it's not straight in that way. It's going to blow out the inside of the transom. So we'll put three in each. But then tipping the drill so that it's going parallel to the transom itself.
I'm going to leave this, this last one up higher because the top one will go through, the next plank will go through the top one there. So there literally will be four screws in each plank. Or the recess of the screw will be covered with a plug, small as it may be. That will conclude this episode, episode number seven on building the little acorn sailing skip. So I hope that uh, explains in a bit more detail how actually every single plank is made on the lap straight boat. Now I know that there are people who are gonna write and say, oh, there's a better way to do it this way, I do it that way. Look, this, this procedure works for me and uh, that's why I'm used to doing it. So uh, that's what I'm gonna carry on doing. You should consider becoming a subscriber if you want to stay up to date on the process of building this boat and any other projects that are going on here at the Orca Boat Shop. Thank you very much. See you next time.